It is the year 3000. The oceans are acid. The sky is fire. But your lifetime warranty remains. However, your travel tripod needs regular maintenance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence here at Peak Design Headquarters, and today we're going to be talking about tripod maintenance and replacement parts. In this video, we're going to talk about all the ways that you can maintain, tune, and clean out your tripod. You're also going to need to replace parts of your tripod if you break them. We think that any sort of maintenance is going to be reserved for heavy users. Even fewer people are going to be in a situation where they need a replacement part. Luckily, we're going to go over that in this video too. Let's get right in. All right, so let's say that your leg is a little too loose. Look how it is on a normal one. Nice. That's no good. So, up here at the top of the leg, this piece is called the clevis. And each clevis has a bolt. Now, you can use the four millimeter side of your hex wrench, or any four millimeter hex wrench, and give this guy a little bit of a turn. I think it's good to do about a quarter or a third turn at a time and check the tightness. That way you don't overextend it. Closer. I like that. Perfect. Let's say you need to tighten the leg where the head of the screw is blocked by the knob. Before you take the knob out, get your shop towels out. Or a rag. But it's cooler to have shop towels. Set one out and have it ready to go. Mm -hmm. Don't take the center column knob out anywhere except indoors. You don't want to get any sort of dirt or sand in that grease. Now, the reason we're doing this is that the grease on the end of this knob is called damping grease. And it is the stickiest, nastiest stuff you've ever seen. You don't want this to touch anything. It's pretty well isolated in the design of the tripod, so it shouldn't get dirty or sandy. Avoid letting that touch anything at all costs, and you should be okay. It's not toxic, uh, it's just sticky. Don't get it on your clothes, don't put it in your mouth. Like most things in a machine shop. Let's say, that you've got some sand or debris inside this joint. Hopefully you don't, but you might. Shop towel's out. Be careful with that center column knob. Undo this screw entirely. Use the four millimeter head. Screw it out. So this screw has a washer, so be careful. You don't want to lose that. You can use the end of your hex wrench to push this side of the screw out, or the pin rather, pin comes out. These are also lubricated with a different lubricant, so be sure to keep them on the shop towel. Now when you pull off the leg, there's gonna be two more washers, so be careful not to lose those. The washers are brass, and those are pretty greased up. All right, so if there is debris in there, clean it off using a towel, uh, not soap, not water, nothing like that. And if you need to put a little more grease on there, it's a lithium high viscosity grease, just find a generic one. Reassembly, make sure that your washers are right up here at the hub. Then you're gonna to wanna to pinch them a little bit as you get this leg back on. It's pretty tight as designed. Now on the pin, there's just this one little notch. Uh, and that means that it's keyed into the rest of the assembly. So it only has like one correct orientation that it will go in. Eyeball to make sure your alignment's as close as you can get it. And it's gonna take some jiggling around. But once you get it, push it in, make sure that key is at the bottom. And it won't go in all the way, but it'll get pretty close. Now, make sure you've still got the washer on the end of this screw. It's gonna be greasy. Thread it in. And I'm gonna hold the pin in with, with my thumb while I tighten it so I don't lose that pin. After reinstalling the leg, it might take a little bit of tuning to have it get the sort of optimal amount of resistance when you're putting it in or out. Then carefully reinstall your center column adjuster. Don't get that grease anywhere. So that's how you tune the leg clevis to hub connection uh, and also how you clean it out if need be. So if customer service has sent you a replacement leg, 
it's going to come with all the hardware assembled. So let's take that off. All right, so these are the pieces that come in the replacement kit. Um, and this is the order you're going to want to make sure they go in. Now, something that you can do is, if able to, you should reuse the brass washers that are on your tripod because there's going to be maybe some residual grease, um, and you might as well get the most out of that. And remember, if you're removing this leg here to the left of the knob, when you take the knob out, do this in a controlled environment so you don't get any sand or debris in it and put it somewhere where you're not going to touch it because that grease is super sticky. Let's just not even mess with that. Let's say this is the leg we're replacing. So go ahead and take this one off. So these will be my old pieces. You got the pin. You can use the tool to push it out. And these are greasy. So have the shop towel out the leg comes out. Now, what you don't see, whoop, there it is, is that these two washers are staining my nice table and might be stuck up here on the hub because of the grease. That's okay. If these washers are working still, I would say reuse them instead of using the fresh ones. Make that residual grease work for you. So casting aside all my broken pieces or my old pieces, I'm going to take the new leg, line it up. So like those washers, the old pin actually has some really good grease on it. So if it's not broken, I would reuse it. Get it started a little bit. Remember it's keyed on the bottom. So keep that key down there. Grabbing a screw and a washer. I'm keeping my thumb on the pin so it doesn't pop out. I feed this guy in, get it started, and then tighten it up with the hex wrench. And depending how tight you like the leg to be attached to the hub, you might need to tune this a little bit. And just super tiny little increments, little quarter turns or less. That feels better. All right, so you just replaced a leg. Uh, keep in mind, like we said earlier, depending on what shape your hardware is in, uh, you could still get some use out of grease, so just pick judiciously. So if customer service has sent you a replacement knob, you're simply gonna wanna screw it in to the hub, right in here. You'll notice that your new knob does not come greased, but there should be some residual knob grease inside the hub. So all you do is take the knob out of the little package and just reinstall it. If customer service has sent you a replacement foot set, it'll have three feet and three screws along with a hex wrench. Replacement is pretty easy. You might've lost your feet or maybe damaged these. Either way, if you've got any feet still on the tripod, be sure to take them off. And when you put your new ones on, Make sure that you've got the shape at the bottom of the foot aligned with the shape at the bottom of your lowest leg. So for ball head maintenance, there's not a ton that we suggest you do. Our most important thing to say is actually to not take apart the compact ball head under any circumstances. You can use a compressed air can to try and dislodge debris if there's any in there. Don't submerge the ball head or hold it under running water. If customer service has sent you replacement ball head screws or top pins, simply use the 2.5 millimeter end of your hex wrench and reattach them into the top of the ball head. So if our customer service team has sent you either a replacement ball head, replacement center column, replacement hook, or a replacement phone mount, we're gonna show you at one time how to disassemble or replace and then reassemble all of those. First thing you can do is take the hook out of the bottom 
in the phone mount out of that, if those are still part of your tripod. Then loosen the ball head and rotate it 90 degrees, exposing the screw at the top of the center column. Using the four millimeter end of your hex wrench, remove the top of the center column. This takes about six or seven turns. Then loosen your center column knob and take the center column out. So disassembled, we have the compact ball head, the center column, the hook, and the mobile mount. Swap out whatever piece you need to with your replacement part or just put the new one in. To reassemble, put the center column into the tripod and tighten the knob. Expose the hole at the top of this section of the center column and use the four millimeter end of your hex wrench to reattach. Put the phone mount into the center column. The magnet will hold it. And then reattach the hook. So that's how you reassemble all of these parts back into your tripod. So if you've got a replacement tool kit, it's gonna come with the bushing removal tool, the hex wrench, and the hex wrench clip. The bushing removal tool can live inside your soft bag in the interior pocket. The hex wrench clip can go on any of the three legs. You're gonna to wanna to attach it with this space here going towards the top of the tripod. So go onto the back of a leg, any of the legs, and start using the long side, clip it on. Then you can insert your hex wrench, and it's got a little detent, so you'll know when it's secure. All right, next, we're gonna look at the cam levers. If any of your cam levers ever feel like they're too easy or too hard to open or close, we can tune them for that. Also, you might notice over time that they push without much force and can't support the weight you need. So let's fix that up. You wanna isolate the cam that needs tuning. And in this case, it's this guy, cam lever C, A, B, C, D. And then using the smaller 2.5 millimeter hex, just loosen or tighten the screw as needed. We recommend going about a quarter turn at a time, just so you can make sure not to over adjust. That feels better. And that's still easy to move. But not quite. Let's go a little more. All right. That's good. And bolts down easy. So each cam lever has its own screw and just adjust as needed. If you need to get sand or debris out, we recommend using compressed air. Now, if you notice a squeaking noise when you use the cam, you can use a Teflon-based dry lubricant and where you're gonna wanna apply it, so open up the cam, and not inside, but on either side of the lever, just put a tiny bit, and when you close it, it'll spread to the correct parts of the mechanism. All right, congratulations. If you've made it to this part of this video, you are in the deepest depths of peak design maintenance video lore. And this is the most complicated thing that I will ever explain. This is bushing replacement kit and or leg cleaning. We really discourage taking the leg apart unless you've been explicitly told to do so by our customer service team. Before we get into the how in taking apart or replacing parts of the leg and bushing, we're gonna do a what. This is a arranged exploded view of all five leg sections, their bushings, the cam lever, and the foot. Let's do some terminology really quick. To my far right, your far left, these are the upper bushings. Then we have the different leg sections. Then we have the cam lever bushings. And then we have the cam levers. This is leg section A. This is cam lever bushing A. 
and this is cam lever A. Down to the next row, this is upper bushing B, leg section B, cam lever bushing B, and cam lever B. Upper bushing C, leg section C, cam lever bushing C, cam lever C. Upper bushing D, leg section D, cam lever bushing D, cam lever D. Upper bushing E, leg section E, foot. The bushing removal tool and the hex wrench come with the bushing replacement kit. These four bushings and these four bushings also come in that kit. The rest of these pieces are gonna come from your tripod or a replacement leg if you get that. So essentially, everything you see in front of me right here is from the clevis all the way down to the foot. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go from this assembled leg to this exploded view. A good thing to keep in mind is that in both the replacement kit and on your tripod when you get it, there are four upper bushings and four cam lever bushings, despite there being five leg sections. The reason for that is that the top of leg A, you attach to the tripod, and at the bottom of leg E, you've got the foot. Something to keep in mind is when we're taking the pieces apart of the leg, we're actually gonna leave leg A attached to the rest of the tripod at the clevis. Uh, there's no real need to take that off. Earlier in the video, we showed you how to deal with this attachment point up here, but we're not really needing to do anything with that right now. So, step one, open up the shroud, and then cam A, and pull out your assembly. And I'm gonna set the rest of the tripod aside. All right, so I've got what's left of my assembly and if you remember from earlier, this section is leg A, and this outer section here is leg B. So this bushing is upper bushing B. I'm gonna take it off carefully, set it over here. And then this is cam lever A, and inside of it is cam lever bushing A. Now to get it out, this is the toughest one of these cam lever bushings to get out. So over here by the screw, I'm gonna pull this part of the bushing away from the wall of the cam lever and then push from below. So that is cam lever bushing A, cam lever A. So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is unscrew the foot. Now open cam lever E and leg E should come right out. So this is the foot side and this is the upper side, which makes this upper bushing E. I'm gonna carefully take it off, put it down here, and then leg E right down here. What I've got left here is still leg section B on the outside, cam lever B, cam lever C, and cam lever D. Right now I'm gonna open up cam lever C, extend the bottom out a little bit, and then close it back down. What I've done there is I've exposed these two little buttons that'll help me get the rest of this assembly out. Now I'm gonna take the bushing removal tool. So I'm gonna align the two buttons on my bushing removal tool with those corresponding buttons right here. Give it a fair amount of pressure and pull. So what I've got here is cam lever D and cam lever bushing D. Got to pinch it a little bit, bushing comes out, cam lever. So now, loosen cam lever C one more time, and leg section D comes out the bottom. All right, so this is leg section D with upper bushing D. So, Got my chart flipped, but that's where those go. All right, so I'm gonna close cam lever C, open cam lever B, pull this out a little bit, close B back down, get my tool, align it with my buttons, 
give it a fair amount of pressure and pull this out. Cam lever C, cam lever bushing C. Now open up cam lever B. Leg section C, upper bushing C. All right, so now we've got leg section B, cam lever B, and inside there, cam lever bushing B. And we saved the best for last. This is tough to get out. You can look at the other cam lever bushings, not that guy, these guys, and get a pretty good idea of what you're trying to do. It's got these two buttons that you've got to push in. So that way you can kind of check yourself as you're trying to get this guy out. And what I've found is that it's actually a little easier if you kind of focus on one button at a time. So I got one side in and I'm gonna use my thumb to get the other one. I get more leverage that way and pull it out. Cam lever B, cam lever bushing B. And leg section B. And as you remember, leg section A is still attached to the tripod. So we've successfully recreated our little chart from the beginning using an assembled leg. Now, if you've ordered a bushing replacement kit, it's gonna have these four bushings and these four bushings for a total of eight bushings, plus the hex wrench, plus the bushing removal tool, and a little instruction card. So if you're cleaning out the leg, uh, you could use a cloth to clean them all. Probably best not to get these too wet, but not a huge deal. Keep in mind there is a little bit of grease in these. Uh, those are your cam levers. The rest of these, just use a damp cloth, clean them out, maybe an air blower if you've got sand inside the tube. All right, so we're gonna reassemble this all into your leg assembly. Uh, and whether that's with the original bushings that you were just washing out or with some replacement bushings, same process. All right, the first step is gonna to be to take the cam lever bushings and install them back into the corresponding cam lever. What you'll see is that on the cam levers themselves, there's a little shelf. And that corresponds to the big lip on one side of each of these bushings. So I'm gonna go ahead and pinch it, get it in there. There, it's on. And it's a little loose right now, don't worry about that. So let's do that three more times. All right, next, let's put these upper bushings onto the corresponding legs, but save this guy for later. That's upper bushing B. So when you're putting these guys back on, you're gonna notice that inside the upper bushing, there are two little buttons on either side, and those correspond to the holes on the top part of these leg sections. You're gonna wanna line them up so that it's the right profile and then when you install these, the upper bushing will be flush with the top of the leg if installed properly. Let's do that two more times. Oh. I did it wrong. Uh, it's not flush with the top, so I'm gonna take it off, flip it, and get it on there. So before you go any further, you're gonna to wanna to just double check that you got these upper bushings on right. Remember it's flush at the top and you have the same shape profile on the bushing as you do on the leg. Um, something else to keep in mind is that sometimes it won't be quite seated in there. And so just make sure that those two little buttons are pushed into the holes on the leg. It should make a little click. Now take leg section B, remember we did not put the bushing on it, and take cam lever B, 
and attach these together. So you're going to hear a click. Make sure that both of the buttons are pressing out through the holes. And you're on. Okay, now I'm going to take leg section C, making sure that I've got the upper bushing on the far end and that I've got the same side of the legs pointing up. I'm going to insert it in. Get it to come out a little bit. Make sure the cam is open. Make sure you don't lose your bushing when you're coming in down on this side. And slide that out. Now I close this cam and install this cam. Cam C onto leg section C. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna open up this other cam, push them down together and leave them open. Now I take leg section D and insert it in here. Make sure to feed that bushing through and get it to come out down at the bottom. Now I'm going to take cam lever D and attach it to this leg section. Helps to tighten these guys. Make sure it pops out. Push them down, keep them open. Let's take leg section E, make sure it's aligned properly and send it down. There it is. Tighten these guys, grab the foot and making sure that that keyed shape on the top of the foot matches to the keyed shape here, your profile of the leg section. And then use the four millimeter hex to tighten it down. Now, cam lever A, which will be loose, uh, upper bushing B, following those same rules we were following earlier. So you can see, and let me move these guys out of the way. You can see that that bushing is flush against the top, just like the other ones. It's on there well. And I'm going to take this whole thing. All right, make sure you've also got lever A open. And put it back on my tripod. Feed it in. Get these guys to be aligned, the two holes, the one on the shroud and the one on the leg. Pinch it closed, close your cam. Good as new. Oh my God. <laughs> if you've got any questions about your travel tripod still, reach out to our customer service team and happy shooting. I'm going to forget how to do it. It's the year 3000. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> like any machine with moving parts, the Peak Design Travel Tripod is going to wear down in certain areas over time and may need a little regular maintenance. Also, you may suffer some catastrophic damage. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.